Well, they have uh, legacy technology, right? Uh, they don't have actually people who can do things. They have a lot of bankers, that's true, but they don't have really talented engineers and designers. So I don't really think they are able to produce what we build. So they can't take apart your app and say, well, that's good, that's good, that's good. We'll find some really smart people to do that. You, you genuinely think that the banks can't do this internally? I mean, they can probably in five, ten years' time, right? But in five, ten years' time, we will build you know, even better products. Okay. All right. One, one quick question for me, then I know that Arjun and Jeff are going to come in on this one as well. I signed up to it, um, and immediately I saw that some of my millennial colleagues in the newsroom were also Revolut users. That is not good for privacy as well, that my colleagues here, who may or may not want me to know who they bank with, I could see them and they could see me straight away. I don't like the privacy angle of that. Well, uh, to be honest with you, you can send money to them directly, right? That's number one. But, but, but I wasn't having anything to do with these young millennials. They're all rich enough as it is. I, I didn't want to. I, I basically wanted to have a transaction with a member of my family who is on the continent as well. I, they don't want me to see their financial details, and I don't want to see their financial details. But to know who they bank with as well, that's giving away quite a bit, isn't it? Uh, well, uh, to be honest with you, when you log in to Revolut, uh, then when you send money, then we ask you whether you want to give us access to your contacts, right? And then when you give us access to your contacts, then you are able to send money to these people in your address book. Okay. Yeah. Nicola, I, want to, I want to pick up on the, on the whole fintech scene, the, the, the challenger banks, the digital banks that have popped up as well. There's a lot of competitors here. You look at the likes of Monzo, N26, um, and the rest of them as well. What's happening here? Because there seems to be a lot of competition. Do you see consolidation? Are you looking at acquisitions? Uh, how does this play out? I think uh, in five years' time, we'll see only three, four, five uh, big players who dominate the whole uh, world. Uh, at the moment, yes, there is competition, but they're just building local banks. Uh, we are bil uh, building global bank alternatives. So we're expanding in the US, we are expanding in Canada, India, Australia, Hong Kong, Singapore. Uh, so we are building a global platform while they're focused on building just you know, one local bank. And when you, when you began Revolut, a lot of the focus was on FX and being able to offer the market rate when people went abroad. Um, there seemed to be a, a big race to the bottom in the FX space when you look at like to TransferWise and some of the other companies as well. How are you trying to expand that to increase the, the revenue you're getting from users? We simply offer FX for free to our users. So all international money transfers are free, all currency exchanges free at interbank rate. So we are the best in pricing and we offer on top of it uh, many other products that you know, other companies don't offer. Uh, Nicolai, what's the um, IPO pipeline look like right now for you or the time frame that you're focused on? A uh, few years from now, I would say. But nothing specific? You're no. not having conversations with bankers? No, not at the moment. Why not? Uh, I think it's too early. I think it's uh, realistic that we can build a 10, 20, 50 billion dollar company before going to IPO. The um, Facebook story has, I think, initiated a round of conversations involving politicians about data privacy, and Steve obviously raised questions about who else he could see on the app. Um, do you think that's going to have any impact on you at all if there is legislation around data privacy? Well, the, there is a uh, legislation coming uh, now, actually, in May, right, GDPR. And we are already uh, prepared for it, so we already implemented all, all requirements. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.